Good day and welcome to our short video on what's new in Windows 11 and the answer is lots of cool stuff. Now when Windows 11 was released originally as the replacement for Windows 10 it was a bit rough but now it's totally polished and ready for everybody including you. There are thousands of fixes, hundreds of new functions and dozens of new features. We have nine things to show you. The first thing is how do you know what version of Windows you're running on? Well click start type in WinVer and press enter and you will see what version you're running. We are running and talking mostly about Windows 11 23H2. So let's get to it. The first thing is ChatGPT is integrated into Windows 11. So if you want to get into Microsoft Copilot, press the Windows key on your keyboard and hold it down and press the letter C and that'll bring up Copilot. You've got the little icon in the bottom left. Let's show you a couple of th cool things you can do with it. The first thing uh, that you probably don't know is you can use the microphone. So I can click on this, I can say something to it and it will actually give me an answer back verbally. That's pretty cool. I can also upload an image by clicking on this little uh, photo icon and then I can ask it to modify the image for me. I can change between ChatGPT version 3 and ChatGPT version 4 by using this more balanced and more precise up at the top. But I can also do some cool things because it's actually integrated into Windows 11. And I don't just mean like you can get to it, I mean it will do things. So I can do things like saying start word. Yep. There it is. Started Word. You can also have it build graphics. Check this out. Create a photorealistic black and white image of Pablo Picasso riding on a surfboard in a gnarly wave in 1921. That's pretty darn realistic. You can also make my life easier by going to a web page like this one from our sister site Partisan Issues, where we try to stick on facts and avoid the emotional stuff and just get the numbers, where we ground through how big is the EV market. But I don't want to read this, it's just too much. So I'm going to click in the top right hand corner here, click Copilot, and I will type summarize this page. Bingo, did a great job. Now if you want more information on Copilot, uh, you, we have a page on it, the best Windows 10 Copilot tips and tricks. And the second of the nine cool things that you can do with Windows 11 now that you couldn't do before is artificial intelligence integration right into some common tools in particular the photos app and here we're going to show you how to use the snipping tool and you think artificial intelligence that's got a lot of hype around it oh yeah this is cool though so this is a graphic that we have from a powerpoint that we uh, snagged from microsoft i'm simply going to grab a, a snip of it uh well a relevant part of it which will be let's say that and you might notice something odd about it which is i've doctored it with uh, bill gates's private uh, email no doubt and his private phone number no doubt so look if i want to send this off to somebody you can redact it automatically so click this text actions button and look at quick redact it will block out automatically email addresses and phone numbers pretty cool also Yes, it does OCR, optical character recognition. So I could copy all text or say I just wanted this line right here. I can just highlight that, press Control-C to copy it, and then I can go into anything. We'll choose Notepad and just paste it. There it is. I just press Control-V to paste. Fantastic. Let's show you a couple of cool AI things in the Photos app. Oh, here's my girlfriend's dog, Tia, under my desk. If I double-click on it, it comes up. But I can go into Edit Mode. In Edit Mode, I can do a spot fix. So I can say, you know what? I really don't like that outlet being there. So I'm gonna click on it here and click on it, wait for it to disappear and then go again. Boom, that outlet's gone. Now I've decided, you know what? I actually don't want any of the background. So I'm going to click on this background and you can see that it has cut out little Tia and I can move the background I can replace the background. Let's replace it with something green. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I can also set this blur. It's actually useful. Another big change in Windows 11 that you couldn't do before, but you can do now are a bunch of taskbar changes. You can see that my Windows 11 looks a lot like Windows 10 uh, as far as the taskbar goes, and that's not by accident. I've changed it. So if you want it to, uh, to look like mine, so the things don't bounce around on you like they do in the default configuration of Windows 11, it's now easily changed. So just right click on the taskbar and select taskbar settings. And uh, I turn off practically everything. So I don't want the search button on, I don't want the icon, I don't want the late, I just don't want any of that. I also turn off the task view and the widgets, but most importantly, I go down to taskbar behaviors. And this feature was available from the very first release, which is the ability to change the taskbar alignment 
from the center to the left. That puts it over here and that means things don't bounce around very much when you launch a program, which means I can find it quickly. But the thing that just came out a few uh, days ago with the most recent build of Windows 11 is the ability to turn off combine. So if I have four copies of Word running with the default configuration, I'll have one tiny little Word icon, which drives me crazy. It means I have to move my mouse down to the bottom, wait for the thumbnail to come up, visually figure out which one I want, and then click on it. Hate that. I want to turn off combine and the reason for that is this way I can see their names at the bottom and I can just go down and click without waiting. While you're here you also might want to change the when using multiple displays show my taskbar on where the window is open. So for instance the setting window is on the screen you're looking at currently but if I moved it to my other screen it would disappear from here and only show up on the other screen's taskbar, which makes it a heck of a lot easier to find things. That's been available since day one as well, but a lot of people don't know about it, so I thought it was worth pointing out. The fourth cool new feature in Windows 11 is the File Explorer, and you think, File Explorer, how interesting could that be? Uh, they've rewritten this from scratch, and the big new feature in here are tabs, just like a browser, and controls, just like a browser, forwards, backwards, that kind of stuff. So let's go into C, Camtasia, Camtasia Presets, I can now go back or I can go up using the buttons here. I can refresh just like a browser. Most importantly though are these tabs like I said. And yes, I can tear these tabs off just like a browser and create things in a separate window and then I can drag things back and recombine them. Nice, huh? Now Microsoft has made the interface more consistent with their web products. So there's this home page now which they cleverly called home and that will show you your recent files and what its AI thinks you may want to use because you've been using something similar to it just recently. The bottom line is, a lot of people like this, I hate it, but I appreciate the concept. That being said, I just turn it off. And how do I turn it off? I click the three dot ellipsis, I select options, open File Explorer to this PC. So when I launch File Explorer, it goes straight to this PC. Why do I do that? Because this doesn't change. I don't like screens that bounce around. I want the screen to be in the same place every time because I'm in a hurry to get to the next thing. And while I'm here in folder options, there's a bunch of other things I often change as well. I turn off hide file extensions. I don't understand why Microsoft got rid of the ability to see WAV, PNG, JPEG, MP4, Word, Doc, whatever, other than it makes it a little prettier but it also makes it an awful lot easier for hackers to fool you. And the last thing we're going to say about uh, the File Explorer is this new gallery function. So if I click on gallery, it just goes and grabs your images. And let me do things like rotating them, double click on them, go into the editor. And also on the right here, I've got uh, this lovely timeline. So I can click on things and see, well, what was happening in 2006? Uh, my little kids. Okay, enough file explorer. The sixth new thing in Windows 11 are the new emoji sets. So that's using emoji set 15. And you might think, I heard emojis in Windows 11, but I don't know how to get to it. Press the Windows key, press the period on your keyboard. You can search or you can just go browse as you see fit. Now the new emojis are more colorful, include some shading, and they make them look more 3D. So some things are much clearer because they're also turned on a bit of an angle. So you can see things are hands and not feet, things like that. But also here are the new emojis that are included. The wing, the moose, the donkeys, the maraca, the flute, rightwards pushing hand, leftward pushing hand, lots of good stuff. The sixth enhanced feature in Windows 11 is the task manager. So I'll just bring up the task manager. If you don't see this, by the way, just on the bottom left click advanced and you'll come here. And what you'll notice is there's a lot of columns here now. In particular, there's this column called status with this little leaf. What's that about? That is efficiency mode. What that's doing is telling you that these apps are not using much electricity. They are deprioritized on the CPU and they're not getting a full amount of memory. That is particularly handy for things like web pages and Microsoft Edge. In the future, Chrome will also support this. They're working on it and Firefox will as well. So that the tabs that you're not using in your browser, the pages you're not actively working on, yeah, it'll pretty much turn them off. You can also force things into efficiency mode. So if I wanted the Citrix workspace application to be in efficiency mode, I could click on it and force efficiency mode. I just click on it and it says, hey, do you want to do that? By the way, not everything supports this, so it might blow things up. When you might want to do that is when a program is really hogging the CPU and you want to have it continue to run, but 
just not quite so aggressively. And another feature is under performance, if you look at your GPU, so normally when you go to the performance tab, you see CPU, uh, but you can click and select your GPU that tell you about what your GPU is actually doing. That's your graphics processor unit. The seventh big improvement in Windows 11 23H2, the latest build, is that voice dictation now has a correct feature. So I can press the Windows plus H key and that'll launch the voice typing tool. And as you can see, it's just doing what it's supposed to do. But at this point, I could say correct that and it will give me a list of choices to correct a mistake that it has made. Now, in the version I'm running right now, that's not functional because of a quirk on my machine but that will probably work in your machine without any problem at all. The eighth new thing in Windows 11 23H2 that you might be interested in are the new apps. There's a new stripped down version of Outlook, which is not very stripped and for a home user, it is just excellent. Do not confuse it with the old Microsoft Mail or Microsoft Outlook Express or anything like that. It's actually really good. It supports Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook.com among other things. You can even connect your Office 365 stuff to it. It has most of the features, but not everything. Corporate users, don't touch it. Stick with the full version of Outlook because there's features that you will want. Same thing with Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams has now fully replaced uh, the old Skype app that used to be integrated. And to let make it less confusing, they have now changed Microsoft Teams from being called Chat to being called Microsoft Teams. Again, that is the home version that is built into all versions of Windows 11, including the Pro and Enterprise versions. Yes, that is confusing. If you are a home user, it is great. If you are a corporate user, do not touch it. Keep using your Microsoft Teams business that came with your Office 365 subscription. And the last new app is Notepad. And you think, Notepad, really? That's going to be exciting? Yeah, it actually kind of is. Look at this. Tabs. And yes, they tear off as well. And I can also rejoin them. So nice. One more feature. These are automatically being saved in the background, which means when I do that and then something, you know, if there's a crash or I've got to reboot my machine and I haven't saved this, no problem. It'll pick up right where it left off. Really nice. And the ninth and last thing we're going to show you in modern Windows 11, which is 23H2, are the setting changes. So click start, click on settings, and if you click on system, power and battery, there's a new energy recommendation section. What's interesting here is turn off my screensaver. And you think, why would I want to turn off the screensaver? Well, that's because if you're running a modern PC, you've got a flat screen, which is an LCD panel, and it turns on instantly, and the motherboard will turn on instantly as well, which means you don't need to keep it running all the time to avoid a lag when you get back to your desk. And another new feature that you might be interested in is network and internet, down to advanced, and then scroll down till you see data usage. We had a client that thought his Outlook and OneDrive were really chewing up his bandwidth. And we brought this up and showed him, nope, wasn't doing it. You can see here, what's burning up my bandwidth is my browser and Microsoft Teams. Outlook is way down at the bottom and OneDrive just makes the top five. So hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Super helps with the Google algorithms. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because on YouTube, everybody has an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye bye.